brothers and sisters. Join us in praying the rosary. You may also put your prayer requests in the comment section so we can pray for them. And you can also get your rosary so you can pray with us. Let's remember that we are in the holy presence of the Lord, in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated in the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The first luminous mystery is the baptism of Christ. Lord Jesus, we know that you are the Prince of Peace, and we thank you for giving us peace amidst these trying times. In this mystery, we pray for the people of Ukraine and other countries fighting in wars right now. May you grant world leaders wisdom and compassion to guide their decisions. May this battle against peace come to an end. Lord, we continue to pray for the people who are suffering and afraid right now. May you continue to be close to them and protect them. Our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. 
Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls into heaven, especially those in most need of your mercy. Mother Mary, through your intercession, we bid you, please bring peace to our family, to our community, to our country, and to the whole world. Amen. The second luminous mystery is the wedding feast at Cana. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the gift of the government and the people serving in public offices. In this mystery, we lift to you the Philippine government, the Philippine government, especially the upcoming election. We pray for an honest, clean, and successful election. O oh Lord, may you remind your current and future leaders to each day of why they decided to dedicate their time, talent, and treasure to public service. Grant them wisdom to unite and to put the needs of the people ahead of their own agenda and open their hearts for the grace of humility. We also leave to you all the voters that we may vote accordingly to their conscience. May they choose candidates that have good character and have the capacity to lead. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. 
O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls into heaven, especially those who need most of thy divine mercy. Mother Mary, through your intercession, we beg you, please bring peace to our families, to our community, to our country, and to the whole world. Amen. The third luminous mystery is the proclamation of the coming of the kingdom of God. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be part of your family. In this mystery, we pray for the Catholic Church, Pope Francis, the bishops, the clergy, all church leaders across the world, and for the light of Jesus' family, especially the Feast Day area. Lord, we ask that you continue to bless our church leaders with wisdom, strength, and will to proclaim the good news to everyone. Comfort them in their personal battles, O Lord, and please protect them from all dangers. Mama Mary, we ask for your intercession. Cover them with your mantle of love as they follow your Son, Jesus. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls into heaven, especially those in most need of your mercy. Mother Mary, through your intercession, we beg you, please bring peace to our families, to our community, to our country, and to the whole world. Amen. The fourth luminous mystery is the transfiguration. We offer this mystery for, for the prayer intentions of Father Calor Carcelar, Father Paulo Asperer, Father Albert Garong, and to our spiritual advisor, Father Bob McConaughey. Lord, we thank you for their gift of wisdom, faith, and guidance. May they continue to be the channel of your grace. Mama Mary, we ask for your intercession to bless their labors and comfort them in their time of need. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, as now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls into heaven, especially those in most need of your mercy. Mother Mary, through your intercession, we beg you, please be in peace to our families, to our community, to our country, and to the whole world. Amen. Amen. The fifth luminous mystery is the institution of the Eucharist. We offer this mystery to all who watch our episodes, whether live or on replay. May you grant them an open heart and a calm spirit to receive your special message to them, Lord. May they continue to encounter you in the very personal way, and may this Biblia Comunia inspire them to love and to serve others. We also pray for the, for the stable uh, internet connection for the viewers, servants, priests who will be joining us tonight. Lord, in your name, we rebuke any distractions that may hinder our encounter with you. We also lift up to you our personal intentions and all the intentions in the comment section. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among men and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and they are for death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among men, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and the hour of our death. Amen. 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among men, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and in are of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among men, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among men, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among men, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among men, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among men, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners now and the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls into heaven, especially those who most of your mercy. Mother Mary, through your intercession, we beg you, please bring peace to our families, to our community, our country and to the whole world. Amen. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy. Hail our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To you do we cry for banished children of fear. To you do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, O most gracious advocate, your eyes of mercy towards us. And after this hour exam, show to us the blessed fruit of your womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary. Let us pray the litany of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, hear us. Christ, hear us. Have mercy on us. God, the Father of Heaven, have mercy on us. God, the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. God, the Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. Holy Trinity, one God, have mercy on us. Holy Mary, pray for us. Holy Mother of God, pray for us. Holy Virgin of Virgins, pray for us. Mother of Christ, Pray for us. Mother of the Church. Pray for us. Mother of Mercy. Pray for us. Mother of Divine Grace. Pray for us. Mother of Hope. Pray for us. Mother Most Pure. Pray for us. Mother Most Peace. Pray for us. Mother Inviolate. Pray for us. Mother Undefiled. Pray for us. Mother most amiable. Pray for us. Mother most admirable. Pray for us. Mother of good counsel. Pray for us. Mother of our creator. Pray for us. Mother of our savior. Pray for us. Virgin most prudent. Pray for us. Virgin most venerable. Pray for us. Virgin most renowned. Pray for us. Virgin most powerful. Pray for us. Virgin most merciful. Pray for us. Virgin most faithful. Pray for us. Mirror of justice. Pray for us. Seat of wisdom. Pray for us. Cause of our joy. Pray for us. Ritual vessel. Pray for us. Vessel of honor, pray for us. Singular vessel of devotion, pray for us. Mystical rose, pray for us. Tower of David, 
Pray for us. Tower of Ivory. Pray for us. House of Gold. Pray for us. Ark of the Covenant. Pray for us. Gate of Heaven. Pray for us. Morning Star. Pray for us. Health of the Sick. Pray for us. Refuge of Sinners. Pray for us. Solace of Migrants. Pray for us. Comforter of the Afflicted. Pray for us. Help of Christians. Pray for us. Queen of Angels. Pray for us. Queen of Patriarchs. Pray for us. Queen of Prophets. Pray for us. Queen of Apostles. Pray for us. Queen of Martyrs. Pray for us. Queen of Confessors. Pray for us. Queen of Virgins. Pray for us. Queen of All Saints. Pray for us. Queen conceived without original sin. Pray for us. Queen assumed into heaven. Pray for us. Queen of the Most Holy Rosary. Pray for us. Queen of the Family. Pray for us. Queen of Peace. Pray for us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Spare us, O Lord. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Graciously hear us, O Lord. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray, O God, whose only begotten Son, by His life, death, and resurrection, has purchased for us the rewards of eternal salvation. Grant, we pray, that by meditating upon these mysteries of the Most Holy Rosary of the Blessed Virgin Mary, we may imitate what they contain and obtain what they promise through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray the litany of humility. O Jesus, meek and the humble of heart, hear me. From the desire of being esteemed, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being loved, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being extolled, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being honored, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being praised, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being preferred to others, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being consulted, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being approved, deliver me, Jesus. For the fear of being humiliated. Deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being despised. Deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of suffering rebukes. Deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being calumniated. Deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being forgotten. Deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being ridiculed. Deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being wrong. Deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being suspected. Deliver me, Jesus. That others may be loved more than I. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be esteemed more than I. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That in the opinion of the world, others may increase and I may decrease. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be chosen and I set aside. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be praised and I am not this. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be preferred to me in everything. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may become holier than I, provided that I become as holy as I should. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. May the divine assistance remains always with us. Amen.
May the souls of the faithful departed, especially Father Michael LaGuardia, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. May the blessing of the Almighty God, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon us and remain with us always. Amen. Amen. Thank you for praying with us, brothers and sisters. Please be ready with your pen, notebook, and Bible because Father Michael Aguardia's Biblia Honia will be back after a short break. It's Biblia Konia. Well, will we say it again? Biblia Konia. Okay, so the way to pronounce the Greek is to pronounce every syllable. Okay, so um, it's not actually Biblia Konia, but Biblia Konia. It's a coined term of two Greek terms. One is Biblia. Biblia comes from the Greek Biblion, okay, which is book, singular. When you put it in the plural, it becomes Biblia. It's now books as a collection. Okay, so Biblia is a collection of books. It's many books. And konia comes from the word diakonia. See, you don't pronounce it that jaconia. <laughs> Gagalit yung mga Greeks kapag narinig na yan. But you say diakonia. And in diakonia, diakonia is service. Um, deacons are meant to serve. That's the ministry of a deacon to serve. So diakonia is diakonia is service. So put the two words together. You have what is the word? Okay. The Bible is God's language of love. It's like you want to hear beautiful messages of love from God. What do you read? You read the Bible. Gusto mo nga pick up lines ni Lord? Read the Bible. Gusto mo na mga lines that would comfort you during desolation, that would give you strength during moments of weakness, that would give you comfort when you are distressed? Read the Bible. All right. So this is God's language of love. The Word of God is not something. The Word of God is someone.
Good evening, everyone. Welcome to another Thursday evening of reflecting on God's Word and listening to His message to all of us. Okay, Again, welcome to Father Michael Aguardas Biblia Cunia. I'm Brother Pong. I'm Sister Vina. And, okay. yeah. and we'll be your hosts for tonight. Okay, so kumusta naman tayo, Sister Vina? How are you? I'm doing good. And dahil na-challenge ako sa background mo last week, <laughs> I have a background now. <laughs> yes. Does the color mean anything or is just your favorite color? This is my favorite color. Obviously, naman sa lipstick ko, sa braces ko. Oh, you must have thick elastic bands there in your braces, no? Okay. Yes. All right. Okay. So, um, to, today is, uh, last, last Sunday we had Divine Mercy Sunday, okay? At ngayon naman, it's going to be another special Sunday for all of us. Okay, for all of us. So, Sister Vina, okay, do you have any special blessings for the week? Uh, good that you asked me, no? Siguro, for me, I'm grateful that I was able to engage with my friends again since pandemic came. Grabe, talagang kulong lang and work and errands. Pero this time... Okay. Sabi yung feeling na mahahug mo and talaga makakausap mo yung mga friends mo. Yeah. Okay. When you say engage, I mean, what did you do? I mean, did you go out? Did you go to a restaurant? Did you go to a resort? What did you do? Yeah, we had our light group. So I was able to share. It's good to, you know, to have this bonding with women. And then grabe yung isa sa amin, nag-share doon na for the first time ever in her life, na for three years, almost two, I think, Two, two years pala, sorry. Doon lang siya nakapag-share. So, grabe. Grabe yung blessing ni Lord talaga that time. Wow! I, I guess, hindi lang siya yung blessed, but also you were blessed by her testimony, by her Sobra. story. Sobra, brother. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, and in fact, I think you have just done with you and your LG mates, okay, uh, Sister Vina, was that you have just, uh, what do you call this, practically executed what Father Albert taught us last time, okay, uh, in his exegesis, that you have to give testimony, okay, that Jesus is alive. Okay? And you have just like shown us that how that Jesus is indeed alive in all of us. There you go. And how about you, Father Paul? Of course, I want to know about you. What was your biggest blessing this week? <laughs> Before I give you my biggest blessing this week, well, a lot of biggest blessings, okay? And uh, one of the, okay, what, <laughs> let me just reveal to you one thing. I, uh, what do I call this? I found out, Sister Vina, that you are my, you are my um, sister's friend. Really? Yeah, I mean, I think you were her former LG head, okay? Uh, Karen, okay. Karen is my sister, okay. Clarence Simmons. Oh, yes, cool. my yes, small world, right? Small world, okay. Oh. <laughs> and um, she showed us, okay, uh, a screenshot of of our Biblia last Thursday, and yeah, that's me. Oh, you're you're friends with Vina, okay. So then, lang, kwento lang yun. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> <biggest> <laughs> My biggest blessing naman this week was I was able to I was able to reconcile okay with someone whom I had a conf- a little conflict okay uh, during this pandemic okay and we had a uh, we had a we had a sort of a get together we we we, ab- we were able to catch up we were able to share what happened and learn from from the incident so in a way there there, there was forgiveness and there was a deeper understanding and it was actually it was actually for me um how to call it one it was an enriching experience at that moment okay agreeing to 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 meet that person that was very much interesting Grabe, new beginnings talaga no talaga yes. Easter nakakatawa naman yun brother Paul <laughs> Yes indeed new beginnings So sa atin naman diyan no sa <laughs> Sa atin, to our viewers there to our brothers and sisters um who are greeting us here hello from France the Hoya good evening good evening Hi, 
And of course, from Shani, kay Hello, the energetic brother po. Nakawalan ka talo kay Gary V, okay? <laughs> you know, the pure energy. There you go. And Sister Amor Kubian, okay, good evening there. Good evening. Hey naman, you know what? We have two hours for today. Share with us at any point during the session. Share with us, no, what has been your new beginning story, okay, for this week? As Sister Vina shared to us her, her LG mate's new beginning and in also in my case, a new beginning because of that reconciliation. So ang tanong ko sa inyo, what has been your new beginning? Okay, there you go. Put it on your comments there. So we can put it on the comment section. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to, to, to share it with others. Remember, sharing is caring. Yes, and of course, to formally open our uh, Biblia Kunia tonight. So tonight we will be um, talking about the Sunday reading. So the Sunday reading, we have this gospel first reading and second reading. We're going to have a deep dive into it. And later on, we will have our big message with Brother Kaloy. Yes, we miss you, brother. And of course, our usual session that we have question and answer portion. And yes, brothers and sisters, we encourage everyone to send in your questions so that we can read it later and we can talk about it and discuss. So yeah. Yeah, again, to all our brothers and sisters watching this at home, whether you are watching it online, the, uh, team live, or watching this on the repeat, team repeat, okay? Those from the Feast at Home, Bear Area District, from uh, what are these face Facebook pages again, Sister Vina? All right. So um, hello to our viewers here on Facebook, of course, or from our FB pages in Feast PICCAM, Feast PICCPM, Feast OPM. Feast Manila, Feast Ermita, Light of Jesus, and of course, the Feast Mall of Asia singles and Feast Mall of Asia. And hello also to our viewers here in Feast Mall of Asia YouTube account. There you go. So again, welcome, welcome, welcome. Please participate. Wag po kayo mahihiya, okay? Share with us your new beginnings. Go ask questions. If something pops up in your head later during the exegesis or during the big message, Go ahead. Okay, all those questions have have relevance. Okay, walang uh, ako lagi ko sinasabi whenever I teach, walang tangang tanong. Okay. Yes. <laughs> there you go. Um, next, I'll go ask those questions. Be bold, and of course, you may also you may also share if you have been inspired by by the message from our exegesis and the big message. Then go ahead, share then whatever you have, okay? Because we have a, this is our community, so in, in this community we share, okay? As I mentioned earlier, sharing is caring. Don't forget to tag your friends. Of course, they will be so blessed tonight. This week, para sa akin kasi brother pong this Thursday is a rest day for me, talaga. Oh, so, yeah. Talaga. And yeah. you, you, you know, it's a rest day with the Lord, no? Yes, that's what I meant. Rest day with the it's Lord. Hearing. Not Yes. I love it. There you go. And in fact, napaka napaka symbolic ng Thursday no kasi nasa gitna siya ng week and it serves as our oasis, okay? In our desert of work. Oh, tagiron de share to yung trabaho no. So, <laughs> so uh, it serves our oasis, our refreshment, our our way to really, really relax. Okay? And it's a good thing that you decided to rest on a Thursday. There you go. Oh, may nag-share Sister Vina, okay? Dito sa ating uh, dito sa ating um uh, Feast Mall of Asia Facebook page from Brother Shani. New beginnings that I get to have conversations, anything personal, especially praying for the person for their intentions. Grab you know what? I'm a witness, okay, to how Shani has been a witness of God's love. Okay, you know. Uh, and really, ano yan, napaka, napaka sociable siya. Not because, okay, not because um, he's a sociable person, but because feeling ko, not na feeling ko, because I see that he has a message to tell, to, to share with everyone. And that message is, God is always love. Thank you, sister. Uh, sister Thank you, brother Shani. <laughs> Sorry, Shani, I'm gender confused. Huh? Okay. <laughs> All right. 
So thank you, which is, uh, thank you, Brother Shani, for sharing your ano, ha, your new beginnings. And speaking of beginnings, it is just right to begin, okay? This uh, this Biblia Kunia, this Father Michael Aguirre's Biblia Kunia with a prayer. So let us call on our formation, the formation head, the Feast Mall of Asia, Brother Ace, to lead the opening prayer. Hi, Brother. Hello. Ace. Good evening, Brother Paul and Vina, Sister Vina. Okay. Allow me to lead everyone in a short prayer. And let's remember that we are in the presence of the Lord. We need the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, we praise you and we glorify you, Lord. You are the King of our lives. And we thank you for all the good things that you have done for us, Lord. Lift up to you our time tonight. Allow us to receive your special message to us, Lord. Allow us to focus on your word. Allow us to focus on your message and may we receive it in our hearts lord lord we pray that you continue to be with us lord and we our daily lives lord may it be in something as ordinary in in our that happens in our daily life lord right now there are a lot of things that are happening in in our community, in our in our country, in the world right now, Lord. Some of us may be experiencing pain or troubles or worries. But please let your presence be felt in our lives, Lord, and may, may we recognize you in our life. May we recognize your voice. And allow us to all faith, Lord. But that when we hear your voice, we will always trust in you, Lord, that you will always be with us and you will always provide for us, Lord, that you will always experience your grace, your love, and your mercy. Lord, we continue to pray for our dear priests, Father, Father Paolo, as per Father Albert Carong and Father Bob McConaughey, as well as our um, brother Coloy Carcerian, Lord. Continue to minister to them. Use them mightily, Lord, in, in sending your message to us. The message of love to us, Lord. Continue to be with them. Provide them with everything that they need, Lord. And protect them from every harm, from any sickness. From, from any pain that they are feeling, Lord. Be with them, Lord. We pray for all of the servants right now, Lord. And may they always feel your presence also in their lives, Lord. And that, but let them feel that what they do matters, even in the even to just one person, Lord. Lord, all of this we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you so much, Brother Ace, for that very wonderful um, prayer. I was able to feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. Let me scream, bosses for Brother Ace. <laughs> Ayan. Thank you so much. By the way, Brother Pong, meron ditong comments, Brother Shan. Ang sabi niya ay, okay lang yan. <laughs> <laughs> yes, okay lang naman taga magkamali. It's all right, okay? It's okay. It's normal to commit mistakes. Thank you, Brother Shani. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So, na miss mo yung voice ni Brother Ace. Yeah. Grabe parang ano yun, very prayerful. Yes. Uh, just for the information of everybody, Brother Ace is still single and available. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Sister Vina? Of course, yeah. To formally um, lead us into our exegesis, of course, I want to call on Father Pao. Our, he is our friend priest here and known also as Rabbi. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Hi, Father Pao. Hi, Rabs. No. <laughs> Hi to everyone. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> Yes, I'm not a rabbi. I'm also a fellow student. And we only have one master, one teacher, and that is the Lord. So Amen. happy Easter. 
Happy Easter to everyone. Uh, yes, I hope and pray uh, that you are the best of health, the best dispositions to receive uh, once again the good news of salvation, of hope and healing through our Biblia Konia. So allow me some seconds to uh, share my slides. All right, so we are now in the third uh, Sunday of Easter. You know, and I would like to, uh, to um, you know, bring uh, and introduce this uh, theme of uh, God, who is a God of nth chances. You know, that is the, what we're celebrating you know, this Easter season, that we have a God of life and not of death, that we have a God of whose, whose loving fidelity is far greater than human betrayal and hardness of heart. That no matter how many times we close you know, doors or doors are closed upon us, it is God himself you know, with his uh, you know, nth chances you know, who would uh, really you know, usher us into doors of uh, new opportunities, you know? new eyes, new smiles, new beginnings. All right, panibagong simula at panibagong pag-asa. You know? You know, when, when students, when students, you know, fail an exam, you know, uh, we are all students here, have been students, or uh, when students fail an exam, they are usually given an opportunity, you know, to redeem themselves by retakes, isn't it? You know, if they miss on the second chance, uh, they will have to study the whole course again. Well, uh, well, I think it, it, uh, uh, the same thi uh, thing uh, applies to, to real life, you know, it's, it's always interesting to observe the reactions of uh, middle-aged people or older people, perhaps, when they are questioned about their past life. You know? Do they have regrets about anything? You know? And what would they do if they were given a second chance? You know? You know, some people will uh, answer unhesitatingly that you know, were they given the opportunity to relive their lives, they would live uh, exactly as they have actually lived it. You know? No regrets. You know, they believe that they have made, you know, the right choices and ended, you know, living a full, a contented life. You know, others, however, when they look back at their uh, past, you know, find, you know, uh, they made the wrong choices, you know, at crucial times. And such people often add, you know, uh, with an immense, perhaps, uh, regret in their voices, ah, if only... I were given a second chance. You know? If I were only given a second chance, how my choice would be different. Not that I know that I know. You know? Well, actually, you know, the sad part of all is that you know, life, you know, uh, perhaps it rarely provides us a second chance or even nth chances. You know? And most of our important you know, choices are final or at least uh, become extremely difficult you know, to reverse you know, after a while. You know, let's say if a person you know, married unwisely you know, and uh, there, his or her choice you know, is uh, irreversible. If someone chooses an unsuitable profession, you know, it becomes increasingly difficult you know, uh, after 15 or so years. You know, uh, as we say, second chances are perhaps rare in real life, you know? and on many issues, there are no second chances. You know? Well, our gospel reading today, you know, some commentators of the gospel would say it is the gospel of the second chance. You know? For indeed, we witness a beautiful, extraordinary uh, thing in this uh, gospel pericope. You know, of course, uh, we know the story. Peter you know, denied the Lord three times. Uh, he ruined his life, he betrayed the Lord, is given a second chance. You know? And we know the rest of the story. Peter lived up you know, fully to his second chance and even to the point of dying you know, for the Lord. So here we have here, you know, the overall uh, theme that God is more interested in our future prospects rather than our past failures. You know? If in our own lives, we are not given a second chance for many of our choices, such is not the case you know, with our God of nth chances. And he never gets tired of giving us second chances 
to humble, you know, especially to humble and honest sinners. But of course, here's the danger. The danger lies in us. Why? Because we may get tired of embracing the end chances of God, thinking that there must be a limit to God's forgiveness. You know, and that is what you know, uh, differentiates you know, Judas and Peter. Judas, he believed that he would not be given a second chance you know, by the good Lord. You know? But again, Peter, you know, Peter you know, he risked everything on his master kind, master's kindness and uh, you know, won. You know? And in fact, he's now you know, uh, one of the greatest, you know, so to speak, witnesses of uh, the risen Lord. All right. So we have here the readings, you know, from the, you know, uh, the book of Acts. You know, the apostles are brought before the Sanhedrin in order to stop speaking in Jesus' name. Uh, we have the, you know, the responsorial psalm. It's a song of praise to God who rescues us from the book of Revelation. John, he describes, uh, you know, uh, his vision of the praises that will be sung to the Lamb by every creature, you know, on heaven and earth. And the gospel reading, Jesus shares, you know, appears to the disciples for a third time after his resurrection and shares a meal with them. You know? So here's a brief summary, uh, so to speak, uh, you know, a uh, summary of the three readings. So the reason, the reason Lord, he appears to the apostles, you know, for the third time. And he restores their faith and he feeds them, you know. Then he commissions Peter to feed his ship. That's a gospel reading. But here, the risen Christ, according to our second reading, he is the lamb slain and risen. You know? And uh, to whom creatures give honor and glory. And uh, with our first reading, the apostles are called to be witnesses to the resurrection event. And uh, they cannot but preach what they have seen, even if that means uh, persecution. That's now here from the gospel reading. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. At that time, Jesus revealed himself again to his disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. He revealed himself in this way. Together were Simon, Peter, Thomas called Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, Zebedee's sons, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. They said to him, we also will come with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. When it was already dawn, Jesus was standing on the shore, but the disciples did not realize it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, children, have you caught anything to eat? They answered him, no. So he said to them, cast the net over the right side of the boat and you will find something. So they cast it and were not able to pull it in because of the number of fish. So the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. When Simon, Peter, heard that it was the Lord, he tucked in his garment, for he was slightly clad, and jumped into the sea. The other disciples came into the boat, for they were not far from shore, only about a hundred yards, dragging the net with the fish. When they climbed out on the shore, they saw a charcoal fire with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you just caught. So Simon Peter went over and dragged the net ashore full of 153 large fish. Even though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come, have breakfast. And none of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? Because they realized it was the Lord. Jesus came over and took the bread and gave it to them. And in like manner, the fish. This was now the third time Jesus was revealed to his disciples after being raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Simon Peter answered him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Simon, 
feed my lambs. He then said to Simon Peter a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Simon Peter answered him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, to him, tend my sheep. Jesus said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was distressed that Jesus said to him a third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep, feed my sheep. Amen, amen, I say to you. When you were younger, you used to dress yourself and go where you wanted. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. He said the signifying by what kind of death he would glorify God. And when he had said this, he said to him, follow me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Brother Paul. Yeah. It is generally admitted uh, that this uh, chapter 21 of the Gospel of John is an addition to the original text of the fourth Gospel. But uh, it was added before the Gospel was circulated, for it is found in all you know, the passages, you know. It's in inspiration and, uh, so to speak, the canonicity have never been uh, questioned. You know, uh, at the Sea of Tiberias. So here, the risen Jesus had already appeared twice, you know, to the apostles in Jerusalem. And they had now returned uh, to their uh, native Galilee, you know, as Jesus had commanded them. And seven of them had spent the night fishing, but they had caught nothing. So here, uh, Jesus uh, was standing, you know, on the shore. He stood on the shore. So, but none of the disciples recognized him, you know. Uh, there are different, uh, you know, uh, characteristics of the risen body. Uh, uh, as what uh, this uh, saint, I think Bernard of Clairvaux, you know, would say, uh, the glorified body is uh, impossible. It is light. It is agile. You know, it is brilliant. You know, it is, uh, you know, nagniningning sa kaluwalhatian, kaya hindi ho na-recognize agad ng mga disciples. You know, impossible, ibig sabihin, you know, it no longer, you know, would suffer, you know, would uh, experience pain. You know, it is light, it defies gravity, it is agile, you know, ibig sabihin, you know, swift in movement. You know, halimbawa, uh, you would, you would, uh, you would encounter Jesus, you know, during the Biblia Kuniya, you know, session, you know, uh, uh, at this moment, you know, later on, as you pray, you would encounter him, or perhaps as you would uh, prepare your uh, your uh, light uh, post dinner, you know, uh, Jesus is there, or perhaps when you are still working right now, you know, you would encounter Jesus, you know. So Jesus is omnipresent, you know. And here, Jesus was standing on shore, but the apostles were not able to recognize him. So the risen and glorified body of Christ would not be visible to human, to earthly eyes. You know? But again, such appearance was bodily. You know? That the risen body, you know, that risen uh, Lord, you know, the, risen, uh, yeah, the risen Jesus has a body. You know? So he took on a human appearance with physical qualities as on the two occasions in Jerusalem. When? Of course, he also, Jesus also ate with them, you know, in order to convince them that he had truly risen and when he showed them his wounds. So Jesus here is not simply a vision. He's not just simply a, a hallucination of the disciples. He's not just simply a ghost, but he is a real person, you know, glorified in his body. All right. It is the Lord. You know, it is the Lord. It is the beloved disciple. John, who was the first to recognize the Lord. You know? I like so much this, uh, uh, I think it's a 14th or 15th century saying, love is the eye. You know? Kung sino daw yung mga tunay na nagmamahal at umiibig at naglilingkod, sila yung tunay na nakakakita. You know? Kasi meron tayong kasabihan, hindi ba? Love is blind. 
Diba? <laughs> Kapag nagmamahal daw ay nagbubulag-bulagan. Well, perhaps, on the contrary, love is the eye. It is uh, the disciple who loved Jesus you know, uh, so much and greatly that he was able to see the Lord. He was able to first recognize the Lord. You know, Peter in his usual impetuosity, you know, being impetuous could not, you know, wait for the boat, you know, to come ashore. And he jumped into the water and swam and uh, or waded in. You know? A charcoal fire, you know, fish and bread. You know, a very uh, powerful image, you know, the charcoal fire. You know, uh, it reminded Peter, you know, that charcoal fire was, it was there. You know, when Peter... You know, uh, deny Jesus. You know, uh, deny Jesus three times. You know, so the risen Lord has prepared a charcoal fire upon which he has placed, you know, roasting fish and bread. So here we have the Lord as not only a chef, but he's also the waiter. He's also the, the what? The host, the gracious host. Now, he reminds Peter, you know, of the charcoal fire. You know, outside the priest's, the high priest's house, you know, uh, that was during the time that Peter denied our Lord. You know, and then these burning coals, you know, by the sea, you know, again appeared by the sea as Jesus he prepared a meal of communion and reconciliation. So two memories. We have the memory of the charcoal fire of betrayal, but again we have here another memory of the charcoal fire of friendship, of forgiveness, of reconciliation. You know? So, mas matindi, mas malalim ang alaala ng pagmamahal, you know, ng katapatan ng Diyos kesa sa ating betrayal. You know? So, how different this fire must have looked to Peter. Siguro that time, nung nakita ni, ni Peter yung charcoal fire, you know, siguro that was a, you know, uh, what? It was a heart-wrenching encounter, heartwarming encounter. You know, you see how how faithful the Lord is in spite of our betrayal. You know how different this fire must have looked to Peter in the light of the dawn, as the risen Lord invites the disciples to come and eat. All right. So one hundred. Ah, okay. None of them. Uh, Yes, none of them dared to, to ask him. You know, even though John saw Christ, you know, in this man on the shore, it is clear that his appearance was not that which they had grown to know so well in their years as his followers. But yet, they believed he was the Christ. So, uh, St. Paul the Apostle would say that there is a transformation, a change, you know, from a, our, with our glorified body. You know, as uh, so what St. Paul would say, from an ignoble to a glorious body, to a flawless body. You know, ignoble to glorious, from a perishable to an imperishable. You know, kaya hindi fully na-recognize ng mga apostles, ng mga disciples, sapagkat nagniningning sa kaluwalhatian. You know? Alright. What is the symbol of the number 153? You know, uh, in the Bible, you know, uh, numbers have meanings, you know. When we speak about 153, you know, it points to fullness, completion, you know, inclusivity. You know, uh, let me present, you know, three, you know, uh, scholars, you know, uh, church fathers, St. Uh, Cyril of Alexandria. For him, 100, you know, is the fullness, number of fullness of the Gentiles, you know. It's the fullest number, 100, you know. Again, you, if you remember the 99 sheep, you know, uh, you know, uh, yung isa na nawawala, you know, uh, hahanap at hahanap hanapin pa rin yan ng good shepherd ni God. Because God would not settle for something which is incomplete. Why? Because 100 is a number of completion, perfection. Now, what is number 50? Okay? So we have here 153. 100 is a number of fullness. 50, we call the remnants of Israel who will be gathered in. You know, how? Through the Trinity. You know, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So that is 153. Another interpretation from St. Augustine. 
You know, uh, what is the number? What is uh, the meaning of the 153 large fish? You know, for St. Augustine, number 10 is a number of law. You know, the Ten Commandments. Seven is the uh, number of grace, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. You know, seven plus 10 equals 17. You know, and you try to, you know, to add, you know, uh, you know, uh, the number, you know, between, you know, uh, one, you know, plus two, plus three, plus four, you know, uh, the 100, from one to 17, you know, the sum is 153. You know, if you have a calculator there, you know, from one to 17, you know, you know, 10 plus seven is 17. But from one to 17, it is 153. All right. And here's another interpretation from St. Jerome. You know, uh, you know, there are 100, there were 153 kinds of fish, you know, uh, during that time. And uh, for St. Jerome, it uh, simply means that all nations will be gathered together by Jesus. You know, that inclusive, that universal embrace of the mission of evangelization that uh, Jesus has entrusted to Peter. All right. Simon, son of Jonah. You know? So the principal purpose of the apparition to Peter you know, becomes clear now. You know, from that meal, from that meal of intimacy, friendship, reconciliation, you know, there is a mission. All right. Simon Bar Jonah, to whom Christ in his earthly life had promised the primacy, the primacy, and he receives it. You know, after, you know, after that breakfast, you know, having been questioned three times, you know, by the Savior, do you love me? Na, na parang si Peter ay nakukulitan na, you know, uh, ay si, si, uh, yeah, si Peter nakukulitan na, you know, uh, kay Lord, you know. But again, it is a deepening of an understanding of the tremendous love of God, you know. You know, the sincerity of his love for him, you know. And uh, of course, uh, Peter he is appointed, you know, as the shepherd of Christ's flock, the church. You know? So it is Peter's uh, mission, destiny, to follow the good shepherd, even to laying down his life for the sheep, as the next verse would explain. All right, when you were younger, all right, when you were younger, you used to dress yourself. You know, the day will come when Peter, like his master, will end his life on the cross. You know, that's, uh, that's our life. It's a Paschal mystery. There are times, you know, moments in our life that we would be very active, you know, in the ministry, in service. But there, uh, there would come a time that we are on the passive mode, you know, passive mode, that we would just simply receive, you know, the, uh, you know, the help coming, the help coming from other people, you know, the guidance coming from people. You know, the day will come when Peter, like his master, will end his life on the cross. You know, all right. And of course, you know, you will stretch out your hands. You know, another will tie you fast. You know, that's a prophecy fulfilled on the Vatican Hill. You know, uh, of course, uh, 37 years later, because Peter would be crucified upside down. That is his martyrdom. All right. Follow me. All right. Even unto death on the cross, Peter carried out this invitation of the letter. All right. So uh, the God of nth chances, you know, uh, he uh, invites us to three things. Meals, mission, and martyrdom. All right. When we speak about meals, it is not just about the sharing of food. You know, a meal is not simply eating food. You know, it is sharing of life. It is sharing of vision. It is unison of hearts and spirits and souls. Pag-uungnay ng kalooban. Hindi ba kapag mahal mo ang isang tao, eh, ipaghahanda mo ng pagkain. You would prepare food. You know, kuminsan, papanoorin mo kumain. Di ba? Kuminsan, eh, ano, uh, mahal mo yung tao, sasabi, naalala ko yung, uh, you know, uh, yung, uh, uh, my friend, you know, who is who has a, a baby, you know, uh, sabi niya, talagang gigil na gigil ako sa'yo, gusto ko itang kainin. 
You know, <laughs> you know, meal, it is not simply eating food, but it is sharing of life, vision, unison of hearts. You know? The God of nth chances calls you know, uh, uh, the disciples on a specific mission. You know, love is not just simply a noun. It is a verb. It is an action word. You know? Feed my sheep, tend my lambs. All right? But of course, this mission would lead us to martyrdom, to become witnesses. Of course, as uh, followers of the Lord, you know, uh, and of course, uh, the disciples, you know, we are like them. You know, we die a thousand times for a thousand reasons, you know, a thousand ways for our mission, for our vocation. You know, that is our calling. All right. First reading. A reading from the Acts of Apostles. When the captain and the court officers had brought the apostles in and made them stand before the Sanhedrin, the high priest questioned them. We gave you strict orders, did we not? to stop teaching in that name. Yet, you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and want to bring this man's blood upon us. But Peter and the apostles said in reply, we must obey God rather than men. The God of our ancestors praised Jesus. Though you had had him killed by hanging him on a tree, God exalted him at his right hand as leader and Savior to grant Israel, repentance and forgiveness of sins. We are witnesses of these things, as is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. The Sanhedrin ordered the apostles to stop speaking in the name of Jesus and dismissed them. So they left the presence of the Sanhedrin, rejoicing that they had been found worthy to suffer this honor for the sake of the name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All right. So thank you, uh, Sister Vina. So uh, the apostles had been uh, put in prison. They were imprisoned by the Jewish leaders because they preached Christ and work uh, miracles. So that night, you know, an angel set them free and told them to, you know, to continue their preaching. You know, it is the God of life. You know, the God, the risen Lord, you know, the spirit who will guide them, you know. So when the guards went next morning to bring the apostles before the court, they found the prison securely locked, but empty. You know? So the apostles were outside preaching in the temple area and they brought them before the Sanhedrin. So what is the Sanhedrin? It is the, you know, highest Jewish council. It's like the Jewish court, you know, without violence for they feared the people. No? So you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching. So the Jewish leaders here were well aware that the ordinary people were joining the new religion, you know, the new sect in great numbers, being moved by the apostles' words and miracles and witness of the risen Lord. So uh, you intend to bring this man's blood. You know, uh, uh, Christ, Jesus Christ, you know, he was still a mere man to them. You know? What they feared was that the people would avenge the death of the innocent Christ on them, you know, the guilty ones. So uh, Peter and the apostles. So here we recognize, you know, Peter's Peter as the, you know, uh, the spokesperson of the apostles. The primacy and the leadership were recognized, you know, from the very beginning. Okay, so Peter had spoken for all, you know, the representative of the apostles. You know, obey God and man. So it was God, Christ, who had commanded them, you know, to preach the gospel, to preach the message of salvation. You know, the Pharisees who were strict observance of the law, they could hardly find fault with Peter's logic. All right? So the God of our fathers, the God of our ancestors. So meaning to say the apostles too were descendants of Abraham and they owed allegiance to the same God. You know, Yahweh. You know? And they raise up Jesus. So the resurrection here 
is almost always attributed to God the Father. You know, so for it was through the resurrection that the fact that Jesus of Nazareth was both the Messiah and the and the Lord, you know, God, it was a proven that he was truly the long-awaited Messiah, you know, uh, promised and prophesied by the scriptures. So it was God the Father who exalted Jesus at his right hand. You know, the glorified Christ right now is the leader. He's the savior of all, you know, including Israel. You know, if and only if, you know, we repent, you know, we repent. So uh, there is a forgiveness of sins, you know, uh, to forgive sins, it is God's prerogative, you know. Uh, but again, we really have to cooperate. We have to say our yes, our fiat to God's transforming mercy and forgiveness. All right. Witnesses of the Holy Spirit. So since Easter uh, Sunday, and again on Pentecost you know, day, the apostles had been given the gift of the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Blessed Trinity, to guide and to assist the apostles and the disciples. So uh, in their preaching, they were but cooperating with the Holy Spirit in proclaiming the truth concerning the mercy of God, concerning you know, uh, the truth coming from the risen Christ. All right. Whom God has given to those that obey him. So Christ had promised that the Holy Spirit would be sent to the apostles and to their followers when he ascended to the Father. And so they were left rejoicing. You know, it made them happy that they were able to suffer, you know, for Christ. But again, when we die with Christ, there's always the promise, you know, the promise that uh, as we die with Christ, we would rise again in glory with him. Second reading. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, look and heard the voices of many angels who surrounded the throne and the living creatures and the elders. They were countless in number, and they cried out in a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches, wisdom and strength. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea, everything in the universe cry out to the one who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be blessing and honor, glory and might forever and ever. The four living creatures answered, Amen, and the elders fell down and worshiped. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Sister Ira. So in this vision, you know, as St. John, he sees uh, Christ, you know, under the image of a lamb that was slain. But it's now the center of the worship, the adoration of the angels and uh, men, you know, creatures. And uh, 30 times, you know, in the book of uh, Revelation, John uses this image to signify Christ. You know? And the source of this image, you know, comes from the Old Testament, you know, the Passover lamb, you know, the book of Exodus. And from the description of the suffering servant of God in the book of the prophet Isaiah, you know, the lamb was led, you know, uh, the suffering servant of God, he was like a lamb, you know, led, uh, led to slaughter, you know, for the salvation of everyone. All right. Voices of thousands of angels. So St. John, in his vision, he sees a huge multitude of creatures, angels and men, you know, surrounding Christ in heaven and chanting his praises. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and wealth. So Christ's divinity of which he emptied himself. You know, he emptied himself. Uh, in Filipino, we say, Hinubad niya ang kanyang pagkadyos at niyakap ang pagkatao. You know, so you see, you know, in humanity, in being human, in embracing his humanity, he was truly divine. You know? That paradox, you know, in order to save mankind, 
is now restored to him. You know, so Christ, as good as God and as the glorified man, is worthy of all the homage that all creatures can give him. So every creature is saying, meaning to say it's the whole universe glorifying Christ. You know, him who sits upon the throne, the Lamb, you know, the one who sits on the throne is God. And the Lamb is Christ, the God-man. You know? All right. So such a beautiful vision, a heavenly vision. You know? All right. So amen. Amen. You know, the four living creatures, you know, the, uh, the idea is taken from, I think it's from uh, Ezra, you know, and the elders taken from Exodus. You know, they represent the new chosen people who have been saved by the blood of the Lamb. You know, this is my blood of the new covenant. As Jesus says in Matthew, which is being shed for many to the remission of sins. You know, all right. And so we also hear from uh, the responsorial psalm, I will praise you, O Lord, for you have rescued me. So uh, the responsorial psalm is actually, it's a thanksgiving psalm, you know, of an individual who has been delivered from death, you know, from the netherworld, from the pit of destruction, despair, and death. So here, the psalmist, uh, he cannot contain his uh, joy. You know, uh, it is like an Easter joy. You know? And so appeals to the bystanders to join in his expression of gratitude. So the mourning he once experiences has now given way to sacred de- uh, celebration. You know, why? Because the psalmist is alive. You know? Very much in contact with God and the community. You know? Especially, and of course, uh, such uh, a salvation, such deliverance, you know, uh, came, you know, as a consequence of his, uh, you know, uh, faith, deep faith, you know. All right. So some points for reflection. What do I admire most about Peter? All right. What is his uh, experience, you know, teaching us about being disciples and servants and shepherds of uh, the community? And second uh, question, in what ways have I experienced the presence and the guidance of Jesus making my work successful and not just simply successful, but fruitful? Like a a bountiful, you know, catch of fish. All right, a short prayer. Risen Jesus, give me once again, you know, the insight and the faith to recognize your presence today to the people whom I encounter, the circumstances in my life. You know, bring your light into my darkness. Give me the confidence in my work, in my mission, in my service. And uh, give me the love that I need, you know, the transforming love that you offer, you know, uh, so I would accomplish the mission uh, that you have given me. Amen. Thank you so much for your patient listening. Thank you so much, Father Paul. It was so rich. All, the, all your sharings about the exegesis. Anyways, you have two questions. <laughs> and I want to answer the second one. Second one. <laughs> Parang ko kahapon sa LG eh. <laughs> Yeah, so what was my experience? Um, my experience um, about Jesus talaga is that when my mom died, that was the test of faith. Like, Nakulong kami sa Asia at that time, and I was the one who's, ano, who's um, having that decision. And ang hirap. Pero I, I was able to ask myself na, Vina, magda-doubt ka na naman ba this time? Kasi the last time na nag-doubt ka and nag-resist ka, hindi maganda yung hindi So sabi ko nung time na yun, nasa Asia na ako, okay Lord, hindi na ako mag-resist, let your will be done. And everything was smooth after that. And it was like a Jesus experience now. When you choose Jesus, smooth flowing siya. 
instead of pag nag-resist, parang mas lalong mahirap eh. And it was so fruitful kasi after that event, during that scenario, ang daming blessings na na binigay sa akin ni Lord. And after my mom died, di ba, Father Michael Aguardia, and I felt like wala na akong panghahawakan. But then again, God is a jealous God and that experience is a Jesus moment for me. That's where I was able to be so fruitful that I am here again in Biblia Kuniya. Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, yeah, it's not forever Good Friday for all of us. We are not forever grieving, you know, in this valley of tears. You know, but again, with the risen Lord, there's always the grace of new beginnings. You know, and for, for Sister Vina, it's a new beginning for your mom. You know, and uh, she, is, she is alive. You know, <laughs> with the risen Lord, you know, in different form of existence. You know, mahirap, mahirap maunawaan dahil sa ating limitadong pag-unawa. Pero yung mga namayapa nating mga mahal sa buhay, they are more alive than us. You know, yeah. because they are with the risen Lord. You know, the God of life and new beginnings. That is indeed consoling, Father Paolo, okay? having <laughs> lost both parents and knowing that they are very much alive, okay, uh, up there, okay, with God, that is very consoling. Maraming salamat po, Father Yes, Paolo. yes. I, I can relate because I also lost my father. And uh, it was truly a Good Friday experience for the family. Uh, very challenging. But uh, indeed, uh, wow, there was Easter when I was ordained, you know, as a priest. Because I lost a biological father and uh, I'm now a spiritual father. So you <laughs> see the, the wisdom of God. You know, uh, it's always life. It doesn't end in death and despair and destruction. Yeah, okay. That's true. That's true. Huh? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Father Paolo. Okay. We have all, we have, uh, all experienced Good Fridays. And right now, um, right now we have, uh, we have Easter season. Still, the Easter season doesn't mean that life ends there or it, it, it in fact, Life, that's the start of life. As you mentioned in the sharing earlier, um, Peter experienced another life by experiencing Jesus a, a, after his resurrection. Right. They had meals, they have yeah. mission, okay? And of course, okay, uh, sadly, there is martyrdom, but that would be the ultimate sacrifice for, for God's greater glory. Okay? Yeah, I think uh, that is what we need. It's the grace of new eyes. You know, panibagong pananaw sa buhay. You know, we may, it's, it's the same people. It's perhaps the same problems, the same circumstances in our life. But if we have those Easter eyes, you know, a new way of looking at things, at people, you know, at the, the problems or the crisis that we are experiencing, you know, uh, that we beg for, you know, the spirit of the risen Christ to really give us that new insight, new outlook in life. I love that Easter eyes. Okay, <laughs> in fact, it gives me a, it gives me another insight, a different insight of a different understanding of what it is to be called an Easter child, or we are Easter children. I've heard that several times in songs, uh, in preachings, but it it's it gives a different perspective of being an Easter child. Okay, wow, that's right. nice. <laughs> okay, thank you, Father Father Paolo. Thank, thank, you. thank you. See you later. Yep, we hope you can still join us later for the Q&A. We'd love to hear your insights too with your Easter eyes. So, <laughs> All right. So this time, let's set our Easter ears this time as we hear messages of new hope with his big new message. Brother Kaloy, Brother Kaloy, pasok. Hi, Brother Kaloy. Hello po, Brother Pong, Sister Vina. Good evening po sa inyong lahat. Okay po ba audio ko? Yes. Super. Loud and clear. Yes. So good evening po everybody. Kung nasaan po man kayo sa mundo, good morning, good afternoon. At uh, tonight, uh, what I'll be sharing to you is a continuation of the sharing of Father Bob last week. So Father Bob shared to you last week about... Uh, the praying of the chaplet of the Divine Mercy, going to confession, and uh, receiving communion, and the corporal works of mercy as preparations for the feast of the Divine Mercy. 
and uh, for one to be able to receive a plenary indulgence. So tonight, uh, my sharing is the continuation of this. It is about another important element in the devotion to the divine mercy. And it is the element of trust. The divine mercy, our Lord Jesus Christ, told Saint Faustina that her heart, uh, his heart is like a fountain. And the water that comes out from this fountain is his mercy. And anyone can draw water from this fountain as long as he or she has a vessel. And this vessel is called trust. Hence, you have the signature, Jesus, I trust in you under the image of the divine mercy. So, the greater the trust, the greater the mercy that we can draw from this fountain. But this trust is not just believing that Jesus is trustworthy, my brothers and sisters. It also entails conversion, the turning away from sin and going back to Jesus. Kasi kung talaga nagtitiwala tayo sa Kanya, iiwan natin yung mga kasalanan natin. Amen? And it is the kind of trust that we show to Jesus even when things don't go our way. Trust in Jesus in the midst of trials and difficulties. And we have seen this earlier in the gospel reading that we have reflected upon. The disciples together with Peter went out in the night, went out the whole night to fish but caught nothing. But early in the morning, Jesus appeared and told them to cast the nets on the other side. They followed and they were able to witness a miracle. Immediately, Peter jumped into the water, approached Jesus, and renewed his commitment. Na-convert ulit si Peter at nanumbalik sa ating Panginoon. And since then, we have seen Peter putting his 100% absolute trust in Jesus. Why? Because his absolute trust in Jesus led him to his own crucifixion. Let me share to you a recent experience, my brothers and sisters. I am presently involved in a Divine Mercy Apostolate in Talikud Island in Davao del Norte. And last month, I, together with my companion in this apostolate, Ate Eunice, were talking about how we would celebrate the Feast of the Divine Mercy. And we were thinking of giving a free recollection and uh, lunch to all the members of the Divine Mercy Association and the Divine Mercy Youth Ministry in the island. And in our computation, what we would be needing for this occasion is 20,000 pesos. And both of us were looking at each other because we did not have money. <laughs> Lakam yung pera. But we knew that the Divine Mercy was listening to us because while we were having our meeting, the image of the Divine Mercy was beside us. <laughs> well, anyway, after one week, uh, after a month, no? I mean, uh, just last week, we celebrated the Feast of the Divine Mercy and we were able to give a free recollection and lunch to all the members all the devotees of the Divine Mercy in the island, all through the generosity of friends and loved ones who were sent 
by the divine mercy. So, amen. Everything went well. But little did we know that something else was going to happen that day. Well, after the celebration, when we were on our way home, we were riding in a tricycle. Along the road, we saw one of the members of our youth ministry lying on the ground. And around her were her fellow youth members panicking. And so I immediately got off the tricycle and ran towards her. Her name is Lai. And uh, one of her fellow youth tried to drive her motorcycle and accidentally bumped a big rock. And because of that, out of fear that uh, her mother would reprimand her and punish her for that, lie painted on the spot. Bigla siyang hinimatay sa takot. And so we carried her and put her on the bench. And then after a while, she regained consciousness. And then she began to cry. And she was shaking. And then she keep on repeating, she keep on saying, my mom would be really be mad of me, at me, he said, and she said. She would surely punish me for this. And uh, she was crying and uh, she was uh, shaking. And then we were trying to calm her down. So what we did was we tried to check the motorcycle and there was no damage. And still she did not calm down. And then I asked the Lord, Lord, what are we going to do? And then Ate Eunice told Lai, Lai, would you like us to accompany you in going back home so that we could talk to your mom? And then finally, she come down. And then she said yes. And so we brought her to our tricycle and we accompanied her back home. Now one of the youth members volunteered to drive her motorcycle and then it was an eight kilometer travel. Now along the way, I was so surprised, my brothers and sisters, because behind us, I saw a convoy of motorcycles, a line of motorcycles. Apparently, all the members of the Divine Mercy Youth Ministry decided to accompany us. They decided to show their support, to show their concern to life. And it was a very moving experience for me because I was surrounded by people who care. And it was just a few months ago that we had organized this youth ministry. And now I am witnessing the divine mercy at work. And so finally, we arrive at the place of life. And then now, Lai was smiling. She was very calm. And then finally, we met her mother. We talked to her. We explained everything. And then afterwards, we rendered a song. All of us sang. And then after we sang, the mother of Lai said, Now I am relieved. And I am assured that my daughter is in good hands. So my brothers and sisters, something unfortunate happened. And I could have gotten angry to the one who drove the motorcycle because it was his fault. After all, I could have just let Lai go home on herself out of fear because the mother might blame us because we were the organizers of the event. But I was moved by the divine mercy to trust. Ate Eunice was moved to trust. Lai was moved to trust. All the members of the youth ministry were moved to trust. And everything went well. So my brothers and sisters, let me summarize everything what Father Bob shared last week and what I have shared tonight into three letters. A, B, and C. A, ask for mercy. Chaplet, confession, communion. 
and be be merciful the corporal works of mercy and c complete trust thank you very much po and uh, yun po ang aking sharing for tonight Patanggalin niyo po. You're so good. Hi, Father Bob. Hi. Hello. I've been listening. Would you Hi. add something to the ABC? Would you like DEF? <laughs> <laughs> and and I like your questions, Father Pong. <laughs> Uh, Father Bob, do you have any uh, any message for us too before we proceed to the Q and A? Well, I think that Brother Kaloy, uh, I've seen it time and time and time again that whether he was in Damar in Kazan City, whether he was giving a retreat somewhere, in each and every instance, he didn't have money. He needed a particular <laughs> amount, and in each and every instance, it happened that he completely surrendered it in trust, as he's talking about tonight. And to trust means to totally give over without taking anything back by yourself. I turn this over to you, Lord. Yeah, but then when he doesn't seem to do anything right away, we take it back. But I've seen in so many instances, because I've known this guy for 20 years, in which he trusted. And in each and every instance, he got exactly the amount that he needed for whatever <laughs> ministry it was, for whatever he was planning with the young people, somebody would come and say, oh, by the way, and they would give him that exact amount. So this is no exaggeration, and I'm not surprised at all that this happened, because when he trusts, he really trusts. Amen to that. Praise to that. So, so, so also, you know, allow God to be a God of the unexpected. Allow God to be a a God of surprises, because when you really love someone, you want to surprise them. Well, if God is love, then no one wants to surprise us more than he, but he cannot surprise us mm -hmm. unless we have the heart of Kaloi, all right, to totally trust that all will be well. And most of the time, it will be. Wow. Thank you, Father God. Father God, to look. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Father <laughs> There's your B. You're making me divine. <laughs> Thank you, Father Bob. That's for... an inspiration from the Holy Spirit, Brother yes. Paul. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Father Bob. That was a very sweet dessert. You know, it's it's just bite size, but it's more than enough. Okay, thank you, Father Bob. In thank fact, you were able to to just focus on not really focus, but really emphasize or intensify the meaning of trust there. Thank you, thank you. Oh, so let me just go back to Father Brother Kaloy, rather Brother Kaloy's message earlier about A B C A A. Um, what is that again? Ask for <laughs> mercy. <laughs> Ask for mercy. Ask for mercy with the CCC. Um, um, be, be merciful. And communion. Yes. Confession. Yes. B is for be merciful. And C is complete trust. Complete trust. Mm. There you go. That is the ABC that we have to this uh, this big message. And earlier we have MMM, um, Meals, Mission, and Martyrdom. Okay? Amen. Wow. Leader. Right? And M -M -M -M's. Yes, and of course, for our Q&A, we also have Fathers A, B, and C, Father Asprer, Father Father Bob, and Brother Kaloy. Okay? Kaloy. Ah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, so Sister Vina, do you, add, do, you have, do you have questions there um, during the exegesis and the... Oh, Father Angelo yeah. Dinpa. Ah. Yes, yes. Oh, Do the ABC. Wow. The ABC <laughs> okay. So, hey, Vina, Father you're... Paul, you were mentioning ABC. So, naisip ko, baka yung D is really a divine. Divine intervention. Kaya ganito ka fruitful yung... Wow. Yeah. <laughs> divine wisdom. That's Guidance. true. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, Sister Vina, questions? 
I have a question. Something struck me during the exegesis. Father Pao, as per mentioned about the charcoal of fire, about betrayal, charcoal in the two memories, charcoal yeah. fire about betrayal and um friendship. Um, can you can you expound on that about that charcoal fire? Parang na trigger mm-hmm. lang sa akin na what yeah. is it about? Ah, yeah. It it was said that the charcoal of fire was uh, present during that time, you know, of of betrayal. You know, uh, you know, uh, the house of uh, the high priest. You know, uh, uh, yeah, they use charcoal of fire for 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 light for heating. So it was during that time. If you would check on on the scriptures, you know, uh, there was fire in it. You know, uh, charcoal of fire. It remind it's uh, the charcoal of fire of betrayal. But again, uh, here once again, you know, uh, it's Jesus. You know, meeting. You know, uh, meeting and using the same, <laughs> the same uh, what instance or the same charcoal of fire, but again he tries to re, uh, you know, uh, rekindle a new a new image, which is an image of friendship, an image of forgiveness. So uh, yeah, I think it uh, it 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 it's uh, perhaps uh, there was still guilt feeling that time for Peter, you know, but. Uh, Jesus, in his divine mercy, in his divine wisdom, you know, offers Peter, you know, the same imagery, you know, the same charcoal of fire, but with a different meaning. You know, it's a, it's a charcoal of fire of healing, of purification, you know, uh, yeah, and new beginnings, and a new friendship, renewed friendship, and mission. Thank you for that, Father Paul. How about yeah. Brother Kaloy and Father Bob? <laughs> in fact, uh, renewed friendship, renewed mission, that is, in fact, in line with our sharings uh, in the beginning parts of this Biblia Kuniya earlier. We talked about my reconciliation with a friend and you having new mission of, of having a renewed mission with your light group, Sister Vina. So come on. I mean, really, indeed, this looking at, looking at our experience with Easter eyes. This is so good. Okay, I love this. All right. So, um, I, my question is about, okay, in this case, then, I don't know if I may sound political here or uh, with this question, okay? But, um, you know, I'm, I, I, I've always believed that God is a God of second chances or even more than that, okay? And people would often use that argument okay, to defend their candidates who have wronged uh, the community or the nation before. So if God were a God of second chances, why don't we give them a second chance, okay? So um, how can we like, um, can we use, the, uh, how can we like qualify that, that, that statement into, into these, into these um, <laughs> supposed statesmen, okay, who, who should receive second chances? Okay, there's, there's nothing wrong with receiving second chances. We get chances every time we go to confession. But then there's also the call to sorrow and repentance and to admit the wrong that we have done. And then a person gets a second chance, particularly, but if they're not a repentant, if they're not showing some sort of apology, injustice, remembering God justice and mercy meet, True. Our God is a God of, of mercy, but also a God of justice. And if someone has harmed you, it is expected that you will admit what you've done wrong and then have the humility to go and honestly apologize. And then if you take that to the level of politician or statesman, there's a big difference between the two. If you take it to politician, then Uh, You can't just go on your name recognition. I think what you have to do if you say, I am your candidate, people's perception is that perhaps your past suggests that you might not be that just if you take us into the future. So it's merely a a humbly saying, yeah, that happened. And I was part of it. Mm -hmm. But to deny it ever happened, that's a lie. That's a lie. And so, therefore, should we give a second chance to somebody who's not truthful? I would mm-hmm. say no. Now, I have no, I have no 
horse in this in this race. Okay, I'm just giving an observation mm -hmm. that I'm looking at my country when I say that. Yeah, okay, the United of course. States of America, all right? Yes. I'm not commenting at all on your election coming up, but the question that you asked, I think, is a very mm -hmm. significant question, very important question. And I come at it from an American political point of view. Mm -hmm. Okay, the disclaimer okay. is noted, brothers and sisters, Kate. Oh, yes, <laughs> I don't have the disclaimer there. He's, he's talking about his U.S. background. I think whatever he, whatever Father Bob shared with us this uh, tonight with that response is very much applicable with what we have a, um, in our current situation. Okay, um, there are other uh, do uh, do brother a uh, father A and brother C would have um, sharing too or insight regarding this. Yeah, I think uh, someone who has uh, truly receive God's mercy is called to be, you know, a missionary of mercy, you know, and of, uh, that involves, you know, a sense of justice. If you are uh, truly a recipient of God's mercy, then uh, you take full responsibility, you know, of, of your sins, of your offenses. So no rationalizations, no justifications, you know, uh, there's a sense of, you know, uh, you, how, you know, uh, how can I make things right? You know, so that heartfelt sorry, you know, to God, it is my fault, that admission. But again, you know, uh, that sense of uh, restitution or what we call restorative justice. You know, we are accountable. We are responsible for our faults, you know, our mistakes. You know, I think, uh, you know, uh, apologies don't, you know, uh, mean anything if we keep doing it, you know, so to speak. So uh, if we are truly sorry and if we are... You know, uh, really, uh, we uh, we uh, take to heart, you know, uh, the grace, the gift of mercy in our, of God's mercy in our lives. Then uh, it's it's a mission. Mercy calls us to be missionaries. So you know, uh, who live up to to justice. You know, God's justice. You know, God's fairness. You know, God's compassion. Thank you, Father. That is exactly the, that's exactly the difference between a statesman and a politician. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I used that term earlier to remind us that they should be statesmen. <laughs> okay, so I, I guess uh, we have to leave that there. Okay, unless Brother Kaloy would like to add something, are you okay? I, I agree with Father Bob and uh, Father Paul. Uh, well, of course, uh, who are we to judge our neighbor? You? We don't know that uh, perhaps this person has already uh, repented from the sins that uh, he has committed. So who are we to judge? But again, uh, it is not uh, only about being sorry for our sins, reconciling with God. We also have to satisfy the divine justice. So uh, the result of receiving mercy from God is to channel this mercy to others. So again, it is not just asking for mercy, but also being merciful. So this person is opt uh, to do justice, uh, to satisfy the justice in order to uh, correct the the wrongdoings that this person has done. Now that is nice. It gives me a different perspective now of what you mentioned earlier, Brother Kaloy, about asking for mercy and being merciful. It's asking for mercy, we are the recipient, and being merciful, we are the doers. And then then in and in the entire process, we have to have complete trust. Wow, we've gone full circle. That's interesting. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Fa Brother Kaloy. All right, Sister Vina, do you have other questions in mind? Um, okay. <laughs> I might not be able to sleep if I'm not going to ask this. So I, I, am <laughs> seeing, I am seeing people, a lot of people judging each and everyone because of this poli politics thing. So my question is, what is uh, what can you say to this um to us, what can you share to us when it comes about 
judgment and how to forgive. Like the context is that um, I feel like it says in the Bible that do not judge. But but with what's happening around, it feels like there are so many judgments and we do not know which one is right or wrong. So think, do you have any message for us? I think you're never you're, you're never going to have people that, especially when it comes to the tension of politics. Uh, my country is divided sharply, the most it's ever been divided along uh, lines of really m very difficult moral issues. And the difficulty is that those who are holding a certain position make what we call in, in logic and argumentum ad hominem. In other words, they attack the person and then they cancel the person. And in, in your country and in mine, one of our fundamental rights is freedom of speech. If you don't like what I'm saying, you can, you know, on TV or whatever, you can turn me off and go to another station. But what's happening in my country is that people not only are making a judgment without walking a, a, a kilometer in that guy's shoes or that woman's shoes, and usually it's on the Catholic side. The secularity, if you will, of my country is such that religion is really being mocked openly, all right? And people get canceled on Twitter because of their religious or political views if they don't agree with the progressives in the United States who believe in abortion right up until the moment of birth, including a Catholic president believes that you should be allowed to have abortion right up. And so what happens is that those who are being canceled rightly get angry at people who are not following the constitution and saying, you know, I might disagree with you totally, but I believe in your right to say it. Now that kind of approach is not, being, is not being made in my country. And I think some of those things are beginning to happen here where people will make judgments. And I say, try to make the judgment as I, I, I preached a few weeks ago at the feast, try and stay away from making a judgment based on somebody else's endorsement. Endorsements are meaningless. And I don't care if it's the Catholic bishops that are endorsing. The endorsings are meaningless if they are seeking to tell you who to vote for. Secondly, you have every right to judge a platform. Why? Because a platform is what politics is all about. You know, who gets what and when do they get it? And how am I going to bring about that change? Now, somebody say, I totally disagree with what you're going to do. And so I'm not going to vote for you. That's fair enough. But when you attack the person without really knowing everything about that person, I think that's unfair. People should have an expectation if the person has an unjust past. They should expect the person to own up to it but then drop it, right? And, and to vote someone based on what they say they would like to do for the country, right? And to, as much as possible, stay away from what you see on, me, on social media, because most of the time there is a hidden agenda there, but rather do your own research and see who is the best candidate to vote for. And that's true in every democracy, that every person's judgment should be respected when that judgment is not about character, though character counts, it always counts, but more so about the person's platform. And if the person doesn't have a platform, that would be the worst person to vote for. And that's my rant for the evening. Any insights, Father Pao? Yeah, yeah, we uh, we have God as our ultimate judge because uh, it is He who can see and probe the depths of uh, of uh, human hearts. You know, so we are all you know are all stand before <laughs> a merciful judge. You know, and uh, well, I think uh, what the Lord Jesus you know uh, uh, reminds us uh, in in the Gospels is that. You know, uh, he does not do away with courts of law, 
that uh, would try those who are accused. You know, he does not, you know, prohibit us from, you know, uh, having opinions on, on the attitudes of people. And he does not forbid us from condemning acts that are clearly evil. So what I think the Lord, you know, reminds us is to, to, to avoid hasty or false judgment, you know. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think uh, our judgment is always partial. It's always temporary. It's always inadequate. And our judgment must be grounded, you know, uh, in, uh, you know, a discernment, you know, a discernment, the spirit of truth, you know, in, in God's word, you know, in uh, what else, you know, uh, our judgment is, uh, of course, uh, must be grounded also on, you know, on, on mercy, on the mercy of God. You know? So, yeah, I think uh, uh, with this, with this, all this uh, political, uh, political uh, issues or concerns that we are, we are uh, facing right now, you know, the political situation is that uh, we need the spirit of discernment, you know, discernment, you know, uh, uh, most especially as we, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, choose, you know, uh, uh, the can choose uh, our leaders, you know, uh, you know, in a few uh, weeks uh, time, you know, uh, we need the spirit of discernment, you know, uh, to to uh, to really to really uh, aid us in our you know uh, conscientious uh, uh, judgment, you know, uh, of uh, yeah. Thank you for that, Father Paul, Brother Kaloy, do you have anything to this add? This is uh, really a very a very difficult uh, question, Sister Vina. <laughs> do you want to because, learn? Uh, <laughs> Because uh, uh, I also have my own candidate, of course, mm -hmm. and it's difficult to be unbiased. Mm -hmm. But I think going back to the scriptures, our Lord Jesus Christ said, He is the way, the truth, and the life. So I think uh, we should observe ourselves in the way we do campaigns and then also in the way we support our candidates if our way is Jesus' way, and if we are promoting the truth, and if we are promoting life. And I think this is also a good category for us to examine our candidates if their way is Jesus' way, and if they are promoting the truth, and if they are promoting life. I think as simple as that. For yeah, that. I think. Can, can I add something? I think uh, in, in our discernment of, of the candidates is, you know, the ultimate respect for human dignity at the yes. same time for common good. So I think uh, that should be the, you know, the, the standard of judgment and how we, you know, discern, you know, who to choose, you know, uh, respect for life, you know, and uh, yeah, common good. Yeah. yeah. All right, so human dignity and common good. Okay, thank you again, Father A, Father B, and Brother C for that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I mean, fa I mean, fathers and brother, I mean, let me, can, can you please just refresh my Latin if I'm right? Uh, way is via, right? Mm. Yeah. Via, via. Yeah. And via, via. And truth is veritas. Amen. Yeah. And life is vita. Yes, Vita, because Vita. of those are V, right? <laughs> mm. Yeah, All a reminder v. for us. Yeah, a reminder for us to vote, you guys. And you know, speaking of voting, you know what? There will be another talk for the singles that will be on Monday. So you know what? You have to you have to watch that. You watch watch for <laughs> watch out for that. Okay, if you if you want to help, uh, if you need further help in discerning who your who your candidate should be, or if you have questions about the about uh, how uh, about the, the the role our responsibility as lay people in with regard to the election? Then in that case, then we will invite you this Monday for the singles gig. Okay, that will be again on our on all across all Facebook pages, the Peace at Home Bear Area District. Okay, so that will be on Monday. Uh, now, Brother Pong, uh, let me add something, pala. Ano go. Po? Go ahead. Yes, because uh, last year I was there in Manila. And now, so since January, I am here in Mindanao. 
Okay. So I was here in Luzon and then now I am living here in Mindanao. The information that we get there in Luzon is different from the information that we get here in Mindanao. There is really a big difference. Wow. And that's why we really have to be careful. We really have to search for the truth and we mm -hmm. really have to promote the truth. Okay. Okay. In fact, when you were saying that, Brother Koloy, what I have in mind was this, okay, that the 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 it's very very the information get there is different from how you get it from here in Manila, okay? Because in Manila it's Tagalog, there it's Bisaya. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Message. Okay. Now, um, in the gospel earlier, we talked about Peter. Okay. And of course, uh, it was there that Jesus asked him three times, Peter, do you love me? And even Peter was kind of like annoyed. Uh, in fact, the word there was distressed. Okay. So in the questions coming from our brothers and sisters here, let's talk about uh, popes because Peter is the first pope. Okay, so there's there's been a past question here about about um, about uh, about uh, about uh, the Pope. Okay, and the question is this: uh, I have to look for it. There it is. Um, okay, so for those who are not so, uh, for those um, for our brothers and sisters who are not so clear yet about why we should obey the Pope, can you please enlighten us? Why should why should we? Okay, it's rooted in sacred scripture. You know, uh, I give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. What you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And Peter, of course, is the head, if you will, of all the apostles. So our Lord, full authority has been given to me, Jesus said. And that authority was passed on to the apostles, all right? And the chief among the apostles through the history of the church, to put it simply, is the Pope. Now, the Pope rarely, rarely acts independently of the other apostles, mm -hmm. of the cardinals and of the bishops. The last time, for example, that the Pope spoke infallibly, meaning you must believe this to be a Catholic, was when he basically, the feast, if you will, that Mary was assumed into heaven. That was what we call a, a statement from the chair of Peter, all right? So we are called in, in, as Catholics, to obediently submit ourselves in faith to that proclamation by the Pope. So when we say that the Pope is infallible, it doesn't mean that every time he gives a talk, a sermon, whatever it happens to be, that it's infallible. However, it is very wise to follow the Pope's wisdom. Why? Because it's consistent with the tradition that's been handed on ever since St. Peter. There has never been a time in the history of the church where what was handed on, namely the deposit of faith, that it was contradicted or an essential truth of the faith was changed. And when you consider all of the centuries and some really bad popes along the way, that truth has always been maintained and hasn't been changed. Perhaps the emphasis changed here and there, but never what the church actually teaches. And the Pope is responsible with the rest of the bishops of the world, is responsible to hand on that tradition or what we teach. Now, I'm not talking about a tradition here with a small T. I'm talking about a tradition with a capital T. In other words, that which is handed on, which we Catholics in obedience and in faith must believe. I hope that helps a little bit. That big T, Father Bob, but the big tradition is the sacred tradition am i right yes okay right a Thank small you. tradition a, a tea a, a tradition with a small t would be communion in the hand or communion on the tongue oh that would be a, a tradition with a small t all right oh for the first thousand years of the church it was in the hand and then it, it changed to on the tongue up until the second vatican council all right mm -hmm. but the truth is that that the most traditional ways to receive communion the most traditional is in the hand oh yes and of course it would be much more practical now that we are in a pandemic and we can receive it by mouth okay so yeah yeah because i i, I remember my secretary i may have told this story here my secretary 
back in the United States when I first moved in there. She said, your father, I want you to know right away that I'll never receive communion in the hand. Mm -hmm. I said, really? Why not? She said, my hands are sinful. And I said, well, Betty, let me ask you a question. Which commits more sins, your hand or your tongue? <laughs> <laughs> this idea of worthiness does, doesn't hold water. All right. It was uh -huh. done simply, if you look at the history of it, it's really very funny because the reason why it was changed from the hand to the tongue was people could only receive communion once a year. Mm -hmm. And so when they received communion, they would take it home with them and have their own private little adoration. And the response of the Vatican to that was to say, from now on, communion can only be on the tongue. It was very practical reason, had nothing to do with liturgy. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's a, a small T, like a tradition. Yes. Okay. Now, um, uh, okay, so I, I think that was a, a, the answer by Father Bob there has already been, come on, uh, he already mentioned the, the scriptures there when it comes to whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, whatever you lose, lose on earth shall be lost in heaven. Okay, so I, I get that in the in my uh, basic catechism. Um, unless Father Paolo and Brother Kaloy have other insights or addenda? Uh, I think uh, the, the Pope as uh, the visible source of Unity and foundation in the Christian community. Uh, very important, the unity in faith. You know, uh, that's why uh, he's the supreme teacher, you know, the supreme pontiff, you know, who would lead us, you know, uh, to uh, to uh, doctrines. You know, uh, the teaching of doctrines, the dogmas. Uh, it's it's all about the visible. You know, he's the visible uh, representative uh, of Jesus Christ you know, as the head of the church. Nice, okay, nice. But and uh, it is not it is not only our Lord Jesus Christ uh, who intended that the apostles would have a leader, that mm -hmm. uh, Peter would be the representative, uh, the head of the the church, the representative of Jesus. But uh, the apostles themselves recognize this. And we have uh, seen this uh, in the episode of the resurrection when Magdalene told the apostles that the body of the Lord is missing, Peter and John immediately rushed to the tomb. And since John is uh, a lot younger than Peter, he was the first one to arrive at the tomb. But he only peeped he did not enter. He waited for Peter. And then when Peter arrived, it was Peter who entered the tomb. So in this, we can already see that even the apostles recognized the primacy of Peter among themselves. And even during the first council, the council of uh, Jerusalem, uh, the, apostles, the apostles gathered together, St. Paul, and uh, Peter was there. And uh, he was consulted. And even uh, in the tradition of the church, when all the apostles uh, were already died, except for St. John, who was still living, mm -hmm. all the bishops at that time went to, uh, would go to the Bishop of Rome for consultation and not to John. Yeah, even, even if he was still alive, okay? Yes. All right, interesting, interesting. So there we can already see um, the, uh, the 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 supremacy of Peter, okay, and uh, and of course, uh, and it was handed down by tradition to all uh, to the other supreme pontiffs, okay. There you go. I love the word I love the word pontiff because it means bridge, if I'm not mistaken, okay. Um, there you go. Okay, here's another question from uh from our brother and from a brother or a sister. Uh, again, this is a past question. This might be in line with the the I don't know. This must be a small T, Father Bob, a small T for tradition. Um, the question is this: um, So when a pope dies, uh, what do they place an open book on his coffin, and is it the Gospels? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's easy. <laughs> 
It's a very straightforward answer. Very <laughs> very short. That's one of my shorter answers. <laughs> You know what? I think you succinctly answered that. Uh, I don't know if Father Paulo would have to add something to that or Brother Kaloy. <laughs> yeah, I think in life and death, it's it's the Word of God. You know, he's married to the Word of God and the promises of God. What life eternal. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay. Oh, so it, again, perhaps let me just like ask you, why is it an open book and why can... It's already a closed coffin. Why not uh, just a closed book either? Father <laughs> 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 Bob was about to answer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, what do you want? You want an open casket and a closed book? <laughs> I don't know. Right? But the gospel is the good news. And even though the Pope is dead, mm -hmm. the good news, as Father Powell is suggesting strongly here, the good news continues. Eternal life. <laughs> the Pope's dead. Long there live the go. Pope. You know, he's, he's alive in Jesus. That's what we believe. So, you know, that's why we wear white, white vestments. We used to wear black vestments back in the 50s, but now they wear white vestments. Why? To symbolize the resurrection. So the gospel being open. And when John Paul II uh, was 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 at his funeral. They were outside, you know, before they went into St. Peter's, and they had that book during the mass. Mm -hmm. And the pages, because of the wind, kept flipping back and forth. It was dynamic. It was as if the Pope himself was turning those pages, you know. Yeah. <laughs> That's why the people yelled out, "Saint now, Saint now!" Back in 2005. Yes. Oh, really? Oh. <laughs> If you watch the review, you can you go to YouTube to that mass and you'll see it. it it's 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 chilling. Okay, I would go. Uh, I'll go to YouTube after this just to see that. Okay. <laughs> All right. Oh, yes, I mean, he's my favorite. He's my favorite saint. Okay, uh, Saint John Paul II. All right. Okay, Sister Vina, do you have other questions there? Yeah. This um, question is what. One from our uh, coming from one of our sister here in Biblia Kanina. So, can you share your thoughts on this verse, Father Bob, um, Father Pao, and Brother Galoy? It's about Ezekiel, um, chapter eighteen, verse twenty. I will read it slowly. The one who sins is the one who will die. The child will not share the guilt of the parent nor will the parent share the guilt of the child. The righteousness of the righteous will be credited to them, and the wickedness of the wicked will be charged against them. So any thoughts about that specific verse that I just have read? Well, this is very true because uh, we are only accountable for our own sins. We will never be accountable for the sins of others. Uh, remember in the Gospel of Matthew, I think it's chapter 25 or 26, uh, when uh, it is the story of the, when, uh, the last judgment, when the sheep and the goats are separated, and our Lord Jesus Christ told the, the sheep and told the goat when I was sick, when I was hungry, when I was naked, when I was uh, a stranger, when I was sick, when I was in prison, individually. So we are only accountable for our own sins and not uh, for the sins of others. So indeed, uh, the sin of the parent is not the sin of the child. The thing that I, as an American, that I have that I have a hard time understanding, but is very present and understood here in the Philippines, is generational sin, mm -hmm. wherein you know uh, a sin seems to be passed on from one generation to the next, and that there are prayers by an exorcist to to break that. That's something that we never covered in our teaching, if you will. Uh, never heard of it before I moved here. Is that cultural or is that actually a spiritual reality? 
where the sins of somebody six generations ago can continue down through the family, even until now, uh, that's something I still have a hard time understanding. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Father Bob, uh, Father Bob, I also have that question in my mind right now, no? that um, is it really a generational curse? Or is it just our thoughts, just because we heard that our um, earlier times, um, our ancestors has that sin and then we invite it and then we feel like we also have that sin? I don't know, because there, there, there are people that, that have gone to a priest, uh, to Father Zakia, for example, and uh, they do these prayovers in which they seek to to cut the cords if you will of, of the generational sin and apparently it's it's pretty well understood I, I i really i understand what you're saying you know given exactly what brother Kaloy has told us that to my mind it doesn't make sense that if somebody if your great grandfather sinned that somehow there is a curse and that that source can only be satan that a totally innocent person would receive that curse I just don't get that. We never covered it in our theology, uh, but I, 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 I just don't get that. I think uh, uh, my my opinion is that you know, uh, well, sin uh, it's 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 personal, you know, because uh, there's a you know a, a full freedom, you know, you commit it. But again, uh, for every personal sin, there is also the communal dimension, you know. Uh, you know, uh, yeah, the communal effect of that sin. You know, so perhaps, perhaps, uh, yeah, I mean, the, the sin, we do not inherit the sin, but the consequences of the sin of our ancestors, because we are living in a community. You know? mm -hmm. So, <laughs> uh, but yeah. Then that, that says something about original sin here. You know, yes. the consequences of original sin are that we are strongly tempted to sin and do give in to it, right? Mm -hmm. But once original sin is taken away, then to my mind, I may be wrong, I often am, but to my mind, you know, that, you know, you, for example, alcoholism, you know, there would be something in our genetic setup that that can be passed on. There's no doubt about that, all right? They've shown that clearly. But as far as a curse is concerned, that's the problem I have, is how, you know, the one who controls the curse in this instance would have to be Satan because he is the source of all this evil. And therefore, the, the curse itself, you know, communal though it be, the curse itself coming on to someone who is totally and completely innocent, that I would have, it's kind of like, yeah, you know, an infant is born with original sin and then that's taken away and yes they're so susceptible to, to temptation but do they need an added curse beyond that again i i'm, I'm not at all uh mm. informed about mm. this uh, i i understand what you're saying for the problem, but i i never learned that but i i found out here in the philippines that the priests do mm. do a right actually to break generational sin so I don't know. I'm just very confused about it. Mm. I don't know if the church teaches that. I never learned it. Mm. I have the same question with other <laughs> Because I, I always believe that um, we're already forgiven 2,000 years ago. So why would we keep on um, holding on to that? <laughs> so that's, that's why I ask if it's just in our head, thinking mm. about it over and over again. Anyway, thank you for that, Father Bob, Father Paul, and Brother Kamari. <laughs> because as a baptized uh, people, as baptized person, we are supposed to be saved from this. Mm -hmm. We are given a new life. Yes. Uh, but uh, with, with, with Father, with what, what Father Paul is saying about the social dimension of sin, uh there, I think there is a truth in that. It is not that kind of uh, the 
the thing that what Father Bob was saying a while ago. But let me give an example. Uh, instance, I had a classmate before who would uh, watch pornographic materials together with his siblings. And it's all right to do it together with their uncle because their uncle is allowing it and their father is allowing it. So somehow we could see a cycle of sin that is happening that is rooted even from the father. And the uncle shares it and now it is brought down to the children who happen to be my classmates. And uh, I think this is the, already the social uh, dimension of, of sin that is uh, taking place. Uh, the, that makes, the cycle that makes of sin. a lot of sense. Yes, it is, uh, I think this is more on uh, the environment and uh, also the psychological makeup uh, that uh, that was nurtured in this person because the psychological makeup and the environment of the parents, the ancestors are the same. Thus, mm -hmm. we could see that uh, there are really families that uh, the grandfather is a womanizer and the father is also a womanizer and the children are also womanizers because it's the environment that they have witnessed, they have seen. They grew up in this kind of environment. So somehow this uh, being uh, wounded in a sense because of the sins of other has affected them and they carry this mm -hmm. on and it is passed on. Uh, that's a, that's a brilliant answer. That's a brilliant yeah. answer. It makes all the sense in the world. I was just kind of lashing a bit against, uh, you know, being punished to the ten, you know, to the fourth generation. That it's, it's therefore not a curse within which you are opening yourself up to an evil spirit being in the family, but rather you're making this rather sociological and psychological. Am I correct? Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, that's the original virus, not the virus of uh, it's, it's <laughs> contagious. You know, sin is contagious, yeah. but again, you know, we believe yeah. and uh, we hope and uh, we commit that uh, the goodness of God is uh, even uh, more powerful, Amen. you know, than uh, yeah. the contagion of sin. Mm -hmm. That made sense because uh, last meeting, I was able to realize that when we sin, in my head, when I sin, it's just me. But someone called out and told me that when you sin, it has an effect to the church. Yeah. And that's how I, exactly. I, I understood it rather below. <laughs> Thank you for that enlightenment. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. Oh, no. I, can't really get, I can't really get over the fact about, you know, about the tradition about vestments, okay? And there is, this will be our last question for tonight, Father Bob, Father Paolo, and Brother Kaloy, about vestments, okay? So this question comes from, from one of our viewers. Why do priests wear clerical collars? I don't know. I, I, I found that most priests here that I've met, because of the heat, even okay. Cardinal Tagli, Right, he doesn't wear a collar. He has the crucifix there, but it's you know in my culture, uh, it's to distinguish that you are a priest, all right, uh, and therefore you're set apart for mission. And so, if someone needs a priest, you know, they, they and, and you're outdoors or whatever it happens to be, they can come to you. Now, in some traditions, the priest doesn't wear any particular distinguishing clothing. Uh, for example, nuns uh, in my country. Uh, used to wear the, what we call a long habit and they would have the thing over and press against their face. Now they wore ordinary clothes, all right? The Sisters of St. Joseph that taught me, they were all decked deep black and a rosary hanging off and, and then they had this bonnet kind of thing on their head that squeezed against their face. That was the nun I was used to when I was growing up, but it, it seems with uh, more modern times, there is a less distinguishing uh, clothing that is worn. So most bishops would hope that their, their, their priests would, would wear 
what we would call the Roman collar. All right. Okay. Uh, but I kind of think it's not mandatory. I haven't heard anything here, and I'm living here a long time, where the bishop said, I expect all of you to wear clerical collars, you know, because they're black and black in this environment is soaks up the sun, you see? True. So most of the felt that I met, they, they wear light clothing that wouldn't necessarily distinguish them as priests, but they would wear maybe a nice crucifix. Mm -hmm. That's just my own experience. I'm not saying that that's... So to distinguish it. them. So it's a yes. part of yeah. identity. You know. An identity. Yeah, exactly. yeah. yeah. So that's true. In fact, we, once we see um, a priest wearing uh, the Roman collar, we can actually say, oh, that's a priest. There you go. Okay. And we, we're going to pray for them priests. Okay. There you go. And I would only <laughs> see in the Philippines, I would only see priests with the Roman collar okay, during photo shoots. Only that. <laughs> <laughs> but not during selfies, right? Not yes. during selfies. Selfie. <laughs> Not doing selfies. <laughs> so, thank you very much, Father Bob, Father Paolo, and Brother Kaloy, our ABC team, okay, for joining us <laughs> tonight for this Biblia Um, And of course, we would like to ask Father Bob for his priestly blessing. Let us pray. God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you that your Holy Spirit has sent out word that all those who join us tonight who love the word, that like to drink in the word, learn so much from Father Powell. And we thank you for the questions that were asked tonight because so often, Lord, we need to clarify what we believe so that we can embrace it even more deeply. I pray particularly for people who still yet, you know, have been away from God's mercy, that those who are watching tonight might gently encourage them to come to the feast and receive that mercy freely and without judgment. And so I ask you to bless, Lord, to bless all the families, all those who watch, all those who are unable to watch tonight. And may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon each of you to remain with you and care for you, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. So muli, maraming salamat, Father Bob, Father Paolo, and Brother Kaloy. Thank you very much. Thank you. Much. <laughs> All right. So again, regarding our weekly shows, we have an announcement. Okay. Oh, by the way, uh, next week, okay, our topic for Father Michael Aguardo's Biblia Cunea would be, oh my gosh, this is very interesting. I know my sheep and mine know me. That would be that this Thursday, May 5, okay, May 5, 2022. All right, brothers and sisters. So earlier you have seen that we we're able to have a question and answer portion. So to send in your tough questions, you can scan this code or if you can scan this, you can go directly to your URL and type in the bit.ly slash tough cues for BK. Yes. And of course, we'd like to invite you to our weekly shows, our weekly programs. And as I mentioned earlier, on Monday, we'll be having the singles gig, and the topic will be about how you, as a lay person, can be also ex exercise your responsibility as a voter. There you go. And of course, we have the other shows here um, from, uh, from Tuesday to Saturday. There you go. And of course, every Sunday would be the okay. fee. Go ahead, Brother Pong. Yes. Okay. So here's the updated fee. Feast Bay Area schedule for May 2022. So on May 1, okay, that's a, that's a St. Joseph's Day. Um, it would be held at PICC, and there, there are two sessions, 8.30 a.m. and 1.30 p.m. And on May 8, we will not be at PICC, but we'll be at the Manila Hotel, Kent City. Uh, and there will be three sessions, 8, 10.45, and 2 p.m. And once we're back, to PICC on May 15, 2022 and 29. We'll also be back to our two sessions, 8.30 a.m. and 1.30 p.m. And lastly, if you have been blessed tonight, of course, we encourage everyone to share your um, love to us through Love Offering, How to Give Online. First, you can send your tithe and love offering to this Union Bank account that you can see on our screen. Or second, you can send our stars via Facebook live stream. And third, send it via Gcash. By the way, Brother Pong, I want to give a shout out to one of our viewers, Mila Garcia, by sending 100 stars 
to us tonight. Yay. Sister Mila. You go, girl. Very good. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. So this is our Biblia Kania for tonight. Thank you for joining us. Um, of course, we would like to thank our fellow servants who have been here since um, who prayed the rosary and who have been monitoring the broadcast of this. So thank you very much to the people behind this service. Maraming maraming salamat din. And for you, our viewers, whether Team Live or Team Repeat, maraming 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 salamat po. And of course, to Father Bob, Father Paolo, and Brother Kaloy, again, thank you. Thank you very much. Brother, so, by the yes. way, um, may humabol na nag-send ng star sa atin. And oh, thank you so much, Eriza SC, 200 stars. Thank you so uh, much. Uh, Ayaw ka pa, Lodi Noble. Baka may mag-400 jump. Okay din. <laughs> Pwede din. <no? laughs> All right. Thank you, everyone. And of course, we'll be seeing you this Sunday at PICC. Or if you cannot go to PICC, see you online. Bye. Thank you.